What is up, friend? Welcome to Grow Your Video Business. This is the podcast for videographers and studio owners who want to learn how to get paid what they're worth, run a smarter business, and live a better life. I'm Ryan Coral from Studio Sherpas, and I, <laughs> I am your host. <laughs> My family, they're always like, Dad, you're so loud when you do your podcast stuff. I'm like, you're loud all the time. So like, let me be loud. It's fine. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Core Group and Storyblocks. Also, hey, I want to invite you into something. I'm very, very excited uh, to have my friend, Justin, who is helping me create a brand new intro for this show. When this show, I don't even know how many episodes we ran, but we had like a really cool intro and this this woman said some really cool stuff and it sounded so cool. I have tired of... <laughs> I have tired of just doing like this like opening line. So uh, I don't know if you love it or hate it, but regardless, we're we're redoing the intro. So I'm I'm very much looking forward to that. And uh, you know maybe you are too. Today's episode it's all about a candid conversation. You're going to hear a very candid converse, conversation from a direct competitor of mine, uh, one that's literally down the street. Okay, it's maybe it's like three streets, uh, but right down the road. Uh, And then what benefits that you can get from befriending the competition. So hopefully that's not a spoiler alert. Um, But then also how the right mindset is crucial in this creative business. I love, I love this conversation with Heather. Um, Super, super good. So I think, uh, I think Heather is amazing. The video team that she has built, the work that they do, uh, the traction that she is creating in her business, the inspiration that she's been for me and I know for other video people in this area, but beyond just this area. Uh, She's an incredible human and just brings a really, really cool perspective. And also props for our female filmmaker listeners out there. I know you're out there. I, I, I don't see and hear from you as much as I would like to, but I know you're out there. I know you're listening. And so this one's for you. (laughs) This one's for you. This one's for all of us. If you're in a spot in your business where you, you struggle on the phone, you struggle, uh, maybe you're not charging as much as you want to for, for client projects. I have a free workshop that I would love for you to take, to attend, to register for and watch. Uh, It's totally free. You can find it at studiosherpas.com slash budget. (laughs) I just work here part-time. And in this workshop, uh, you're going to learn the techniques that we use to help learn from our clients, to help really pull out uh, things like, what is their budget? What is their budget for a project? Because uh, you can spend a lot of time on a phone. You can waste a lot of time on a phone talking with somebody about their project that they're really excited about, and that's cool. But if they've only got $500 and you normally charge $5,000, uh, boy, I, I mean, I want if I can find that out in five minutes or less, um, I would prefer that. So this workshop, I help you do that. You can access the workshop if you go to studiosherpas.com slash budget.com. Yeah, I'm from the Midwest, and I kind of have some allergy stuff going on. <laughs> It is what it is. Uh, I'm super thankful for you to be here. Check out this ad from our sponsor. Visit our sponsors because you can help support the show by doing that. Uh, But check this out and then we'll get into today's episode. If there was one thing that could have ended my business 17 years ago, it would be because of the numbers. I hate accounting, taxes, W9s, W2s, WD40s, spreadsheets, all of that stuff. And I hate it mostly because I'm honestly, I'm afraid of it. I'm just not great with numbers. If this sounds familiar or if you're so new in your business that it's not even on your radar yet, you need Core Group. Core Group can help you create financial systems and tax strategies that you need so you can grow profitably. And they've been doing this for over 20 years. They become an extension of your team so that you can stay in your lane of expertise and then lean on them to help guide you along the way. For me, having a team of experts in my corner to help keep track of our books and a just to make sure that we're budgeting for taxes appropriately, to have an actual strategy for our taxes and our accounting is priceless. And it allows me to sleep easier at night knowing that I don't have to be an expert in that arena. If you wanna avoid surprises in your video business, 
and you want experienced help building a plan for the future that you want, both professionally and personally, head over to studiosherpas.com slash core for more information. And when you're ready to set up a free consult with them, make sure to mention Studio Sherpas for a special discount too. I got your back. Get more out of your accountant. Go to studiosherpas.com slash core. What's up, friends? Hey, welcome to this episode of the podcast. Today, my guest is actually a friend and a neighbor. Uh, Heather Zara, who is the CEO and the owner of Zara Creative, uh, which is a Detroit-based video production studio that helps forward-thinking brands make meaningful connections with their audiences. She has interviewed inspiring humans like, I was going to say myself, but you've never interviewed me. (laughs) Not yet. Martha Stewart, Kobe Bryant, Michael Strahan, John Vervados, LeBron James, and more. She says that stories have the power to heal and transform our lives, and Heather has made it her life's work to tell those stories. Heather, what's up, my friend? Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm seriously, I'm so excited. I've been looking forward to this for for a while. For a long time. For a long time, many years. (laughs) One of the people who inspired my business is you. Mm. So I'm really uh, honored. Heather and I got together a few weeks ago and uh, she kind of shared some of that story, which is pretty fun. Her, the work that Heather and her team does is awesome. Uh, she, uh, I've, I've mentioned her uh, not by name in the past on different episodes <laughs> where, where I would talk about, you know, seeing our, and, and I'm all about, uh, and we talked about this as well, community yeah. versus competition. Totally. And in that same breath, when you see, your you know community uh, that is working right down the street from you doing incredible work for me like i think a long time ago it used to invoke like this uh like a fear inside Mm -hmm. of me Mm -hmm. um but as i started to overcome and really grow into my my own identity and know what i'm good at and what our team is good at uh there's just a, a a different kind of confidence and comfortability um but also in seeing the work that you and your team have done and most recently your guys new website and you know kind of like this fresh updated branding uh there's this like oh my gosh like this is incredible but it puts a pressure on not not a pressure it it puts a motivation on me Mm. to say like i want to up level our work i want our stuff to look better i want our our branding to be like top notch so you you have helped me uh do that to want to be better uh, for our team so thank you for that um thank you because ex- i feel exactly the same way i basically like you could take your answer and just go yep that's it there's an answer too because i i i same thing i think there was a point when i first started the, the company um that i had all these kind of insecurities mm. and so i your your work actually your work literally your work with epic motion was the video that I saw that sparked the entire idea for my business. And I used to not be truthful about that story. Mm. I used to also, I would not name you by name. I, I would say, oh, this company that I saw in New York City, cause I didn't want it. Like I, at the time I thought, oh, you're not allowed to like, you know, their competition. Like I had that really like old school business belief. And yeah. I'm so grateful that we've shed that. Both of us have shed that because it is so much more freeing when you can look at your community as like a catalyst to help you grow. And we've been talking for years about how we would like to work together. And I still, I still can't wait to figure out what is that project that crosses our path that we can finally put both of our teams together and make something magical. Cause I so respect the work that you and your team create. I have since the beginning, clearly, it was the video that I watched. I was like, oh my God, what is that? It was a wedding video. Can, should I tell this story? Do you want to yeah, hear this sure. story? Yeah, sure. That's, that's good? fun. <laughs> cool. I, you're literally the person that inspired my business. So it's great. Um, at the time, so this was on my very last day, actually, at Channel 4 as a reporter, uh, clients of yours got married and they were friends of someone I was dating at the time. I actually went to high school with them, but yeah. Anyway, so go to this wedding on my very last day at Channel 4. So we're talking about symbolism here. I mean, I had no idea, um, you know, how symbolic it would, it would actually, you know, become. Yeah. But um, 
after, I think it was like six months later. Yeah, June. It was June of 2011. So my last day was in December 22nd. December 22nd, 2010. I went to this wedding that you were at. I didn't really pay much attention to, to you, <laughs> truthfully. I'm just going to be really honest. I didn't know I wanted to start a video company back then. So I wasn't paying attention. Um, fast forward January, I started my new job at the Detroit Pistons. Six months later, the team went into a lockout. The NBA literally went into a lockout. So kind of felt a little bit like when the pandemic started becoming like this really serious, real thing and the lockdown started happening. It felt similar in that regard, but only in my world. You know, my world was shutting down. The NBA was shutting down, right? So I start this new job. <clears throat> I'm there for six months. I have no players to interview. And at the time we went back to those friends house and I was still dating the guy. We went to their, to their house to watch their wedding video. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I don't want to watch their wedding video. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I was there. I saw it. They got married. I, was like, I don't care girl. about watching this wedding video. Um, and we go over there and I remember watching and I was hooked. I mean, keep in mind, those friends of mine i'm not like super close with or anything and i also don't like love love weddings i i appreciate weddings I've, i i think they're great but i'm not like the person who's obsessed with them so to watch this work and to be obsessed in the moment on the spot i mean i had a full body chill i was watching i was like oh my god this is storytelling it's cinematic it's got movement it's beautiful I'm crying over here. I'm emotional over here. I feel things. I feel things deep within my belly. And I thought, I want to do that. And I was literally, I, mm. and I said to myself, I was like, oh my God, I think I have all those skills that I could do that. You know, I've been a journalist for my whole career. I, I've been playing with video cameras since I was a child. I love storytelling. I've been cutting music for years since even when I was a dancer. Um, I, I just, it made so much sense. Yeah. And I'd never told stories in that way before. So you really sparked, you sparked the whole idea for me. Literally that night I started asking questions to to the to the woman who I was at her house and she was actually in the wedding business as well. I don't, she might even still be, um, but she worked in events. And so I was asking all these questions. Literally, I was planning the business that night, like because of you, Ryan Coral, because of you. So, I mean, I have so much gratitude to you. You're part of my story. You're never going to not be part of my story. Even when I was a liar and I used to say it was a company that I watched in New York City or something. What a liar. I don't lie anymore. And I will never lie again. I will give you all the credit for the rest of my days on this universe. Oh, my goodness. I mean, but seriously, like, completely changed my life. And I think it was mm. one of those moments. I'm telling that story not just because I'm sitting with you, but I think it's valuable. Because <clears throat> sometimes there are certain things that are happening. Your world can feel shut down. You know, you might be in a period of stillness, darkness. Does that sound familiar? So many of us have been, <laughs> have been going through, you know, this last year. And I think it's important to remind ourselves that some of the most beautiful creations, some of the most beautiful businesses, some of the most beautiful, you know, relationships, everything good kind of comes from stillness. I'm, I'm convinced of the good and the value that can come from those moments in life. And because I was in one of those moments and I happened to watch your beautiful work, you know, inspiration sparked. And look at here we are 10 years later, I've still got this business that started as as a as an inspiration at these people's house. And I just remember going, well, I got to ask so many questions. I had so many questions. My curiosity was just, it was just running wild. And then I went home and for months I stalked Ryan Coral's website. <laughs> I, that was all I did. I would watch all his videos. I, so you've made me cry so many tears of joy and emotion. And also like at the time, like jealousy was just few, like mm. building, you know, like all this like envy. And one thing I've recently really uh, learned in the last few years and really like grasped is anytime you feel envy, it's, it's information. Yeah. It's information of like the direction you actually want to be going. And so I look at envy also as a really valuable thing if you can, you know, recognize it in the moment and start, you know, asking yourself, well, why am I envious? Mm -hmm. What is it that I want to do that is yeah. similar to this? And so thank you for, for being such an inspiration for me. You push me. I love it.
It's You're welcome. Um, I, I love that. That's thank you for sharing all that. I mean, it's super fun to hear the, you know, <laughs> just the inspiration that I was a part of in, in your, you know, building this business that's been in business for 10 years and you guys do incredible work. And this episode is not just about uh, Heather and I stroking each other's feathers, but like she, <laughs> she really is very, 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 very talented, um, has an awesome team, has a great heart. And um, I, I just, I feel like there's, there's something in this part of the conversation that I, you know, I've got notes here of like things I want to talk about, but mm. it reminds me of when I first started, you know, I wasn't afraid to reach out to people that were that were that own video companies because I had a lot of questions just like you. I was like, mm. How, like you know, what, what do you charge and like, um, what should you do? What should you not do? And, um, and I think there were some people that that I approached that were a little skittish. They they yeah. you know they were maybe they were jealous of my excitement, enthusiasm. You know, they've been doing the work for a long time and sort of fell out of love with it. And so maybe they felt like I was creeping on that on their territory and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it was weird because we would be talking to similar clients, you know, the same clients. And uh, so that definitely was part of all of that. But for me, <clears throat> you know, I was able to find value in building a community with other people in the video world, which doesn't mean mm -hmm. that I didn't didn't experience jealousy or envy or any of those those things, especially early on. Um, but I, I also, at the same time, uh, I put myself out there to try to uh, to build a community of people that we could lean on each other. We could share referrals. We could share knowledge. We could go to conferences together and workshops mm. and, and learn. And uh, and before I knew it, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is this is better because I was seeing people that weren't doing that. And yeah. I'm like, that that life just doesn't <clears throat> seem as good as this one yeah <laughs> where, where people were afraid to share and they did they they weren't open or they weren't totally honest and you could kind of sense that and feel that and so you know eventually starting studio sherpas to to build a community of videographers and people that want to grow together it's just such a natural fit for me mm. which I, I i sort of accidentally forgot that i'm like this is like part of my journey like way back from the beginning. So, you know, the fact that you and I are having this conversation, you know, Heather and I have, <laughs> I was gonna say, fought over, you know, <laughs> same job, same clients yeah. and, uh, you know, arm wrestled and sometimes she's beat me <laughs> and, uh, and sometimes I've beat her, but you know, if we arm wrestled left-handed, I would totally win cause I'm left-handed. But, um, but you know, through, through all of that for us to rise above and to, um, experience those growing pains of like, uh, like their stuff is so good, but I can actually be better, you know, if we're friends and when mm. she's booked or when she's support, she can lean on, you know, somebody that she knows and trusts. Yeah. And I want to be a person that, that other video teams and video videographers know and trust. It's just, it's more fulfilling and it's, it's way better in, in my mind uh, to live like that than Definitely. the alternative. Oh, absolutely. And as someone who's lived in both, yeah. you know, I've, I was definitely probably one of those, not even definitely, probably, definitely one of those, uh, you know, really closed off guarded people because I had all, I, I came from different industries. You know, I came from uh, a news background. Um, I was a sports reporter and wow, talk about cutthroat, you know? Mm. So I took a lot of really old belief systems that you know, honestly don't work in any industry, but they were so prevalent around me that I just absorbed it almost by osmosis. And I just, it, I took it and I owned it as like part of my operating system. And then when you can be exposed to different ways of being and recognize um, that there's a different way, it's so much more freeing. Um, it's so much more natural as well. Like we're not meant to do things alone. Right. Like I don't care right. if you're a sole owner of a business. Like I think both of us are sole owners, right? You don't have partners, right? right. We're sole owners of our business. But to have a community of people you can rely on is is so supporting and uplifting. And um, I'm just grateful that I made that switch. And actually a, a flashback came to me and I, I think you're part of this for me too as well. Um, yeah, you're just so wonderful. Let's Ryan Coyle, you're so inspiring. Uh, do you remember you used to host a community 
you, you had a community that you hosted in person for years. Yeah. And I remember you invited me and I remember how damn nervous I was to go to this thing, you know, like I'm so nervous. I would think it was a Blackfin in Royal Oak. It doesn't exist anymore. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but I remember this day. Okay, this just came to me when you were, when you were sharing. Mm. Um, and I remember being like so nervous and like also like almost like practicing in my head, like, what am I allowed to say? What am I not allowed to say? What, what should I tell them? And what should I not tell them? It's like, you know, like all these old school, like fears yeah. that kind of come to the surface. Um, and I remember leaving there thinking, the way he is is so wonderful. I just want to be like that. So you're just, look at you, just dishing out the inspiration left and right for growth, personal growth, professional growth. I mean, and that's what fuels me. Like, that's the thing that gets me like, um, the transformation process. Cause I have transformed so much. And I think yeah. owning a business, especially owning a business in our world, which is we're storytellers. Um, I think it's so symbolic and the parallels of our industry mm. are so beautiful for learning and growing as a human, like in this life. Um, you know, you talk about shifting your perspective, reframing, you know, the shot, um, clearing off your lens, switching your lens. Like this, these are all the things that we need to do on a day-to-day -day right. basis to stay in touch with who we actually are and to stay on the right path. So I, I love that about our industry um, and what it's taught me, but even owning the business itself and you look back 10 years, how long have you been in business? Almost 20, right? Yeah. It's like, 17, uh, 18? Eight, 18 years this year, I think it'll be. Let's just take a moment. Hold 17, on. 17, Let's just take a you. moment. Let's celebrate this. What a beautiful. Thanks. I mean, come on. So good. Woo, just got a full body chill. <laughs> it's good. Um, but I, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm, I, when I look back 10 years ago and I think, whoo, who was that hurricane? Who is that hurricane Heather? Who is she? <laughs> you know, like just hurricaning. <laughs> I mean, wow. Just so different. <laughs> Yeah, we, we just finished reading this book uh, by this guy named Richard Rohr. It's called Everything Belongs. And uh, as I reflected, you know, to like right after high school and kind of like all these like pivotal moments in my life, mm. you know, going to college, meeting Andrea, getting married, having our first kids, you know, starting my business, all of these things. And I look back and some, some of them are so cringeworthy, right? Like the way that I the way that I was, the way that I acted, the way that I, you know, treated people. And, um, but at the same time, like that's a part of my story and that's a part yes. of my journey and those things belong because yeah. today here, like I feel, you know, confident in who I am today, but I know fast forward five or 10 years, I'm going to look back and be like, oh man, I had still so much <laughs> to learn and so many areas to grow in and so much more to experience. But I think part of what you're saying is that there is, you know, Hurricane Heather, like what you wouldn't be where you're at today having exactly. the impact that you're having today without mm. Hurricane Heather. Exactly. Right? I don't regret being a hurricane. That's just, yeah, like you said, it's part of the she journey. Came in like a <laughs> pretty much. Um, yeah, pretty much. I was, I have a podcast now too. I just started it. I'm not like 200 something episodes in. I'm like two episodes in. Actually just one. Close. We, just, we mean... just launched the first one like last, this week, <laughs> a couple of days ago. But um, even that is similar in a regard. Okay. So like, I believe that we heal and we like learn just through conversations. So, like in this moment right now, both you and I are like upgrading to a new yeah. level of like who we are. That's just inevitable for everyone. And then, you know, as we're looking back at the podcast and we're doing like the edits of it, I learn even more then. Yeah. I mean, I'm just, I, I notice that even some things that I say in that moment, they come out and then all of a sudden they're not relevant anymore. Mm. Does that make sense? Like, yeah. the I'm such a growth junkie. Like, I'm obsessed with the transformation process. I'm, I'm here to grow. I'm here to grow. I think we're all here to learn, to unlearn, mostly unlearn. Yeah. Let's just be real. Like, unlearning Hurricane Heather type of habits. You know, those types of things. Um, and I, I think that it's kind of similar, like, the parallel of owning a business I think the best piece of advice I would have for any business owner, uh, video production related or not, is take time to reflect, mm. take time to look in that mirror, but be kind to yourself. Don't be like, oh, you're such a hurricane. You need to calm it down. Like just, you know, like be gentle with yourself. Be kind with yourself. Like look at yourself like, 
like you're like your inner child basically and you're like helping helping just kind of reflect like okay what's happening in the business that is not supportive right now what is happening in the business that is driving me crazy what is happening in the business that needs to be solved or fixed or paid attention to and then take that and start looking at yourself and start saying well are those some of the same issues that i have personally because i believe that as leaders of an organization <clears throat> typically you can look in the mirror and go oh because I'm not doing this for myself, look how it's impacting my business. That's always at the end of the day how it, how it, yeah. how it lands for me, um, and it really puts that ownership back in, in my pocket. Like, and and you don't have to be an owner of a business to think this way. I think we right. all need to own our lives. We all right. need to own our roles. We all need to own like what we're putting out there. Because guess what? We're just gonna get right back or it's gonna show up right in front of us in the form of our businesses or our relationships or our home life, like anything really. But what whatever's on the inside, I believe reflects outside. Whatever's on the outside is a reflection of what's happening inside. So I think that's, I think that's what I've learned the most. Just owning a business period um, is the, the, the evolution that happens and the evolution that's gonna to continue to happen and being kind to myself and all those around me in the process. Back when I started my video company, stock footage, it used to be the worst. It was terrible, terrible quality, super cheesy shots and really small selection and it was really expensive. That is not the case with Storyblocks. They offer affordable subscription plans to their enormous library of stock footage. And with their unlimited access plan, you get access to the whole library, including HD and 4K footage. They've got After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, music, images, sound effects, and more. Seriously, there is tons. There have been so many projects where our team just needed one extra shot you know, maybe the day after the shoot, the client was like, hey, this would have been a great thing to get. And we're like, ah. or in post-production, they're like, hey, you know what would be a really cool shot? We've saved our clients and ourselves a ton of money and headaches and heartaches. And we've saved a couple of projects that just needed that one special shot with our Storyblocks subscription. Head over to storyblocks.com slash Studio Sherpas to help you create more video with their affordable subscriptions. Yeah. Well, I think, I mean, that's, that's a great point. Like the, to reflect on the, the evolution because you can evolve and with, without taking some time to reflect and think through like, what were the moments? What were the things uh, that I did do or didn't do? And why did I do them? Or why didn't I do them? Uh, but to, you know, ask those questions of yourself like that, I think just makes the, the refining process uh, quicker, easier, better mm. the next time. Yes. Uh, yes. without without that reflection without you know taking that that time to just be quiet and to and to be kind to, to yourself through that yeah. um you know that that just it it takes us longer uh, to grow and to become really like who who we want to become yes if we don't look at it how can we like I was talking to uh, a friend of mine, Nicole Hartwig. She owns a, a company called Capri for Girls. It's an it's a financial literacy app for women and female identifying people. And I just she's so she's so incredible. And we were talking a little bit about I don't even know where I was going. Let me just let me just stop. I'm just gonna stop because it went away. So this is probably not something to share. <laughs> I'm like, why was I telling this story? Hold on. What well, we're talking say? about. Uh taking that time to reflect. Oh yeah. Well, she talks, oh, okay. So she talks a lot about financial literacy and I was asking her, well, what's like the first step someone can take? And I think anyone who's been in a financial situation at any point in their life, typically when you're in like a financial situation that maybe isn't as positive, you kind of avoid looking at your bank account or you right. avoid looking at it. And the point <laughs> is, is like, well, let's explore why. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing. So attention is care. When you care for something, you're paying attention to it. Yeah. I like that. And and it's about like not being hard on yourself. So there are inevitably going to be things that are gonna happen when you start a business that you're gonna like do and you're gonna quote unquote mess up or whatever. You're gonna make quote unquote mistakes, but they're not really mistakes. Um, 
And you have to pay attention to those places, those areas that make you a little uncomfortable because when you're paying attention to it, you're, you're simply caring for it. And yeah. how can you improve something if you're not caring for it? So it's like, look at the bank account. account. <laughs> look at the bank account, even if it's not filled to the level that you like. Look at your credit score, even if it's not the, the level that you like, because you can't really start to make strides in the right direction unless you start paying attention to it. Right. So I think that is a it's a good analogy for like how to look at ourselves and how to look at our businesses. It's often the things that we want to heal within ourselves or fix or change. I don't like the word fix because we're not, update. we're not here. To, yeah. Up, update a little, a little up level, like an improvement, like growth, you know, growth. Um, not everyone grows, right? I mean, there's people that you've probably had had in your, have had in your life and you maybe haven't seen them in 20 years and then you see them and they're exactly the same. Yeah. I don't want to be one of those people. Yeah, right. I don't want to be one of those people. I'm not here to do that. I don't want to start a company in 2011 and then when you check it out in, you know, 2021, all the work looks the same. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want that. That sounds terrible. It sounds boring. It sounds like we haven't been doing any learning. Mm -hmm. it sounds like we haven't been doing any unlearning as right. well. Yeah. So, That's good. yeah. So you've been you've been in business for ten years. What like why why are you still doing this work? Like what's what gets you Ooh. excited about it? Hopefully something gets you excited about it. <sighs> so many things get me excited about it. I I'm I am truly a I'm very passionate about our industry, our field, our ability to take moments from different pieces. You take a bunch of different pieces, a bunch of different moments, a bunch of different sound bites, a bunch of different things, right? And you bring them together in a way that creates feeling. Kind of going back to that feeling that you gave me when I watched your the first film that I watched that you created. It gave me a feeling that I'll never forget. That's the point for me. I love creating a feeling for people. I yeah. love creating understanding for people. Um, I think that's just who I am at the core. Um, I'm a first generation American and my parents are from Iraq. And they're so wonderful in wanting us to live the all-American dream that they decided to teach us English, which in reality is their third language. You know, they, they speak Arabic, Chaldean, and uh, English. And so while that's wonderful, it also created some inevitable challenges. You know, the people who raised me and I didn't really speak the same first language, but it also created my, my skill in this world, which is mm -hmm. translating, communicating, really coming up with ways of communicating with each other to create understanding and connection. It's literally my life's work. My life's work since I was a child before I even knew what I was doing. I've always been the translator. <laughs> like, mm. I've always been the one who's like, ooh, this doesn't really exist in Chaldean, so let me figure out how I can express this thing that I've got going on, even though it doesn't make sense to them. Let's figure out a way, which is also, I think, how these voices started, <laughs> these voices that I do. <laughs> I don't... I, <laughs> I think it started as a coping mechanism, let's, but let's dive into that a little right? more. Let's, let's double click on that. And um... <laughs> I think it just, it, it became a way for me to talk about things that were sometimes challenging and difficult and make them kind of fun. Cause I felt like I was always a translator in some regard. Um, even when my, I have a little brother and he's not little, he's a, he's a man. He's good, about to have a, a daughter. <laughs> he's married and <laughs> he's not a little brother. He's not little. He's my little brother. That's Tommy, right. you're, I don't think you're little. Um, he's, he's, wait, how old am I? I'm going to be 37. So he's going to be 35. Yeah. He's, it's my little brother. He's 35 years old. Um, but you know, when he was younger, I understood everything about him even before he could talk. And I was always the translator. <laughs> like, you know, it's just, it's just who I am. Um, so I love a lot about our work. I love all of it. Now, as I've, um, inevitably come across, you know, the growth stages of being an entrepreneur, being a business owner. Um, the last four or five years, I've really taken my hands off the reins, you know, like I'm not doing every single thing anymore. Um, and so it's been an, an interesting shift of roles. So I think that's probably one of the bigger challenging things is in the beginning, figuring out like your new role, you know, like how you're fitting in. But again, to that point, what I love about the work is similar to the actual creative of the work. I love putting people together. I love finding really great people, really talented humans, values-driven humans, finding them and putting them in the right seat with the right people and making this beautiful, almost like 
it's like this magical concoction, this magical creation. And together we can create those feelings for everyone else that watches our work. We can create those really unique interactions with people, maybe, you know, our clients, maybe they were having a shit day and then they talk to someone from our team and like they're dancing and they're filled with sunshine and then they walk away and they're like, "Woo! I don't know what's going on with those people, but I really like them. I want to work with them. I actually had that happen with, um, I won't name drop the name, but a, a great client that um, we've started building a relationship with. And they're so funny. They're like, how do we just talk to you every week? I was like, this is wonderful. I think this is the point. Let's, let's do this. Let's talk every week. We've got a meeting every Tuesday now, like running for like, it's just great. Um, I think that's what brings me the most joy is, is the fact that this thing that you gave me the idea for, you know, like <laughs> this thing is actually bringing joy Mm. to people that's for me like the big picture of it um you know create meaningful work with the gifts that we were given yeah. and the skills and the talents that we've been spending our time and energy you know trying to master really sharing them with the world in a way that adds value i want to leave this place a little bit better damn it than when we arrived that's that's kind of the point yeah well you're doing that um thank you i love that that's really good as are you Thank you. Thanks. Uh, we talked right before the show started. We we're just kind of sharing some notes. Uh, I thought this was interesting because I, I have a similar experience, but I would love for you to mm. share a little bit about this, like how you've gone through hiring. I mean, you've hired how many, how many over the course of 10 years, how many employees, how many people with interns do you think that you should probably know that, huh? Shoot. Um, I, mean, I have I would... no idea. I'm, I'm like at 20, 30, pro probably like 40. I was going to say 30, 35, 40, maybe. Um, so you're thinking in, you know, like what you were at, what you thought you were after versus like what you're, wh who you go after today. Mm -hmm. I think it's, this is a really interesting, uh, thought process. So share, share that. Yeah. It's a good awareness, um, yeah. that I've just recently kind of come to. And I actually, I woke up this morning and had this clarity and I was like, Ooh, this is delightful that I'm talking to Ryan. We should share this with the viewers, with the listeners. Okay. So. In the beginning, when I first started the business, <clears throat> it was me on my couch, right? For the first, for the first almost nine months. Then I reconnected with someone who I'd gone to high school with <clears throat> and he was good at technical, like the actual holding of the video camera, the actual editing of the work. I'm not the technical person. I know how to do everything, but I stick to what I'm good at. Yeah. So <laughs> I, 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 I don't do the technical work. So when we first started, it was me and him, and I knew eventually, you know, there's going to be growth. Well, as a, you know, entrepreneur with $600 in my bank account and $60,000 of student debt when I started this business, because I don't know if you got the memo, the television industry is not as glamorous as it looks. I made like $22,000 a year my first job, $25,000 a year my second job. And I think by the time I left the industry, after 10 years of experience and Emmy awards and the whole deal, I think I made 60K a year. But anyway, anyway, not 60K seems to be a number that is like in my swirl. But anyway, so I um, had a lot of debt and I thought, well, I need support. I need talent. I need help. So I'm someone who had a lot of internships. I had a lot of them because in the news industry, you need them to build your resume tape, to have experience, to get in the to get in there and figure out how to do this stuff. So that was always something that I was, pa I was passionate about. I wanted to help support others and lift others up. And, and so internships was the, the way that we grew the business. I mean, I, I was even, I remember featured in articles about my little, um, it, it was like my farm system that I, I was developing. I would hire interns from the local colleges and when they would work for us, if we liked them, I would hire them after they graduated. And so I built the company the first, I would say, four or five years really on this like intern power. Um, and while uh, what I've learned is this, we are not exactly the company that can support people who haven't had experience yet because we're too small. So we end up not providing them the amount of support that they actually need, that they would actually benefit from. Um, what I've realized is we're actually the company where you know, you go and you're, you're building, we're the company that, hold on, let me start on that part over. 
people who go out into the world and get experience at other places, they hone their skills, they, they develop skills, they, they hone in on their talents, and then they want to leave to go somewhere you know, where they're supported and where they can add value and take all those skills and really build something in a place that they believe in, with people that they believe in, with a mission that they believe in, that's who we're good for. Mm. That is what I've recognized over the years because <clears throat> if you have a small team, um, the less hands-on you have to be about teaching the actual craft, the better the, the organization can, can grow um, and we can support each other in better ways. So I think after year, maybe three or four in the business, I ended up having 15 employees, full-time employees, but, but none of them had, but none of them had really any experience besides working for me. And, you know, we're a company who puts people before profits. I've always been like that, even before I had the, the ethics and the value system that I have now, which is much better, which is much kinder, which is much, much more holistic, I would say, um, to both myself and those around me. Um, but wow, I was really hurricaning myself into like, you know, getting frustrated, like, why didn't this person not do this? And why did this person not do that? Well, because they don't know how. Right. Because they don't know how, Heather. They don't know how. You just, they all just were working in school. They were learning in class. And then they graduated and you were like, yeah, come on over here. Like, you're going to be this person. You're going to be this person. And I was really square peg, round hole. You know, I was, I was trying to put people in these roles that they didn't really fit in. Mm -hmm. um, and so I've learned a lot from that. Um, now we have a team that's so experienced that they could tell me what to do. And I like that. I like that very much. It is, um, it allows me to be my best self for them. I don't have to, you know, do everything anymore. And I didn't do everything back then, but man, I wanted to, I wanted my hand in everything yeah. and that's not healthy and it's not sustainable. And so while I still love supporting young talent, um, I recognize that they're better off working somewhere else for a couple of years, getting hands-on experience. Maybe they're working at a place that they don't love. Maybe it doesn't feel exactly like them, but they're learning the trade. They're learning the craft. They're learning the art. They're learning communication. And then when they feel like that fire in their belly, they're like, I want something more. I want to work for a place that puts me before the money. I want to work at a place that brings me joy. I want to work at a place with people who have the same values as me, you know, where we walk into a room and we're like, mm, you feel good, like you're with your team, you're with your people. Then come on over to Zara Creative. Give me a call. You know, that's like, that's who I've learned that we are. And I, I, I really wanted to share that with anyone who's listening because I think it's easy to say in your mind, like especially when you're first starting, like, I don't have that much money. I don't have yeah, that much right. going on. And, but I need support. And I will say, uh, if you can make it work, if it's possible, hire less people versus like all these seats. Because wow, the, if you have the right people in the right seat, wow. I mean, I'm so grateful for the team that surrounds me every day in this moment today. Like, I mean, I could cry thinking about how much I love them. I could cry about how beautiful their talents are. Like, they're just the best. And so while we are going to open up our internship program again, you have to work somewhere else before you work here. It's just, it's just what I figured out. It's just what I figured out what works for right now. So, yeah. I think it's good. Like, one of the one of the things you don't think about, we're like, oh, interns, we can get somebody to work for us for free. And the, we've, we've experienced, had the same experience where it like takes so much time and mm -hmm. energy to teach and to share, to get, you know, these people to a level that is helpful for where we need them. Mm -hmm. And one of the challenges that we face is that in this work, a lot of it is creative. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you're not only teaching maybe some helping them unlearn some of the, you know, bad practices that maybe aren't as cinematic or like whatever, whatever your mm. brand flair is, you're kind of having to teach that. <clears throat> but then also like, you know, creative, like how do you teach creatively? It's not just like, Hey, uh, or maybe, maybe some interns are where your, your sole responsibility is to dump our cards, format the cards and get them ready for the next shoot. Like, mm -hmm. 
but it, at least the interns that we had, we always wanted to, they were interested in being a part of production and you know, maybe shooting, maybe editing. And so that just added a layer of like, wow, as soon as they enter into that, where it's not just, hey, follow this video. We made a little video that's going to sh you know, show you how to organize the gear room. As soon as we show something that adds some type of creative flair element, then it's like, okay, does this match our brand? And if not, then we have to spend more time working with them to, yes. so the, the costs that's involved in having somebody that's, that's not already, that doesn't have experience that isn't, um, isn't ready, you know, to, yeah. to be a full-time employee. Uh, there, there is a cost involved in it. And they, when we think yeah. like, well, I'll, I'll be saving money by not having to pay somebody. Sometimes it's worth paying yes. somebody because you're not having to teach as many things. So I think just having that awareness, there's also, there are also people out there that are passionate teachers and that are gifted and patient yes. and efficient in the way that they teach so that they are, they, they can take on interns and they can show them and get them up to speed really quick. That, that was, we were, we were okay at that if the intern was exceptional yes if, if they weren't exceptional and and they were still you know learning everything mm -hmm. that's when it just took so much of our time and energy and we've gone mm -hmm. through so many seasons where we're like we're not taking interns right now because we yeah. just you know had a, a time suck of an experience yeah uh, and then we get to a spot where we're like hey let's take it and it's like we forgot like how <laughs> much of a pain and a process yeah. and, and it all is but at the same time knowing the value that we can give to to interns for them to you know, go from here out into the world. There's that part that I'm always like, I'm like, oh man, I wish, I wish we did have more experience yeah. with interns so that we could, you know, prep them for the world. But in the same breath, I'm like, like I, I'm trying to get my business in a, in a, yes. in a better spot. And, uh, so it, you know, balancing those things. Yeah. Uh, All right. Yeah. One of the best tips I've learned came from Marcus, Marcus Buckham, and it was about strengths and it really kind of clarified a lot for me in my mind. Um, Basically, a strength isn't just something you're good at. It has to have two qualities. You have to be good at it and you have to enjoy it. So I think a lot of us, especially high achievers, you're probably good at a lot of things, I would imagine. Now, if you're good at something and you don't like it and it makes you feel contracted, like that's not a strength. Sorry to burst your bubble. It's not a strength. And you shouldn't build your business around it. So two things to build your role, your business around. Um, what are the things that you're good at that also bring you joy, that make you feel expanded? That is how you really can determine what a true strength is. And I think it's so helpful to know that about ourselves. I think self-knowledge just in general helps us as business, business owners, as storytellers, like, come on, as, as directors, as editors, as creators of story, as creators of of people who, as creators of meaning, we create meaning for people. We take a bunch of things and we put them together to make sense of something. So to know our strengths, to know ourselves, I think is so important and helps us so much along the path. Yeah. I love that. And, and also when I, I just remember early on, thinking of the things that drove me crazy about running a business, you know, I could do them and I did them for a long time. Um, but I became stronger and more effective when I started delegating those things and, and handing those things off that didn't bring me life that, um, I, you know, I just wasn't the best at. I shouldn't have been spending my time, you know, in those spaces. So I, th I think we trick ourselves as entrepreneurs, you know, when we're running a business, because we have to, at the beginning, we have to do all of all of the things, but mm -hmm. we trick ourselves into thinking that we're the only one that can ever do all of the things or do them as good, mm -hmm. as, you know, as good as we can. And uh, there's a lot of freedom and there's a lot more life when we just realize that, man, my sweet spot is this. If you can identify your sweet spot, you know, your, your real strength, the thing that you're good at and yeah. that you love doing, the sooner you can identify that um, and spend the majority of your time in there, the, the, mm -hmm. the better your, your business is going to be. Uh, if you have employees, the happier they're going to be. Um, mm -hmm. The more beneficial you're going to be for your clients. I mean, it's just like all of the things I think revolve around that idea of strength. I think that's really rich. Yeah. And I think it's also like 
give yourself permission slip to do the thing that you're really good at, even if it's not what you quote unquote think you're supposed to be doing. Like that's kind of part of all those like old stories that we tell ourselves, those old beliefs. And I think if anything, the lesson that we can all learn as people in video and production is we literally are living is made off of telling stories and also to recognize that we are very good storytellers, tellers, but so that that can become, you know, it can become detrimental if we're not checking the stories that we're telling ourselves in our mind, because most of the stories for me, what I've learned over the years is most of the stories were really like unuseful. Like yeah. I always had these, like, here's one example, such a minor example, but you know, as a, as a younger entrepreneur, I started my business when I was 27. I used to have all these expectations of what I needed to show up like in a meeting. So like, um, and I think a lot of it came from my, my anchor lady background. And, and I had to show up in different ways because of my bosses would tell me like, you need to do this and you need to cut your hair and you need to do this. It's like, I don't know who is this person anymore. Be yourself as much as you humanly possibly can. If being yourself means wearing a leather jacket and ripped je jeans, we go into a meeting. Great. Go be yourself. Don't, don't change yourself to fit into this role that you're telling yourself society needs you to show up as. So like, I think that's probably the biggest lesson as a director, as an owner of a video production company, and also as a person who wants to grow, like check the stories, check the stories that are running in your own mind and like, and like for self of them like release the ones that don't, don't help. And like the ones that help you great. Keep those. Yep. And you'll be happier because you'll be working with uh, clients that, that can appreciate you being yourself and employees will be drawn to you for being yourself and not have a yes, unrealistic yes. expectation of you. Uh, that's not really you. I mean, that's like, that, that just, that would not be good. <laughs> that would not no, be it's not good. It doesn't feel good. Heather, That's a good way to live. This is this has been uh, super fun. Minus Saturday, nobody's going to see all of the <laughs> issues that we had about you know eighty percent, ninety percent of the way through this whole thing. But uh, besides that, even that that was kind of hilarious. I accidentally it sent uh, Heather a text that said, "I love you." It, <laughs> I meant to say, "I hear you." <laughs> so uh, I, I think I'm just used to texting my wife that those three words. Anyway, yes. Uh, Slightly embarrassing, uh, but uh, I do. I, I love and appreciate the human that you are, the work that you're doing. Um, how can people keep up with what you got going on and, uh, and uh, tell them about your podcast? Awesome. Thank you. Yes, we just launched uh, the podcast. It's called The Edit. It is live on Spotify and it's all about really editing the story. Oh, Lola. Dang it. Lola. Oh, that was my dog. Lola, that's my that's my little lady, Lola. Oh, just like Coda. Does she? They, they have Lola, honey. Remarks. You're okay. Yeah. Somebody walked by the window and she she wanted to slow. Um, yeah, to follow us, we I just started. Uh, I just launched our podcast called The Edit, and it's all about personal and professional transformation um, from the point of view of entrepreneurship, storytelling. We talk a lot about creativity, communication, and really just growth a lot of learning and unlearning. So you can check us out there. Um, Instagram. I love Instagram. So you can follow me at Heather Zara and then also at Zara creative. And our website is ZaraCreative.com. I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for doing the thing that you do because because of you, I am me. So thank you. If you, if you, if you watch that video, you know, 10 years ago, I don't know if I would have had this idea. Maybe I would have maybe, but it wouldn't have been as fun. So thank you. That's awesome. You're welcome. Thanks. Thanks for sharing that. Um, awesome. Well, any, any parting words before we, before we leave today? Um, this was really fun and I hope we get to do this again and I would love you on the podcast and yeah, thank you. This was really a joyful time, joyful way to spend time yes. with someone who I really look up to. So oh. thank you. Yes. Awesome. Thanks, Heather. I forgot to ask, what do you think about my new backgrounds? I got, well, it's the same background, but uh, I've got lights. I got some really cool lights. Um, I'm really excited about them. I'm really excited about them. Uh, <laughs> hey, if you enjoyed this episode, let me know. Leave a comment. Um, I feel like this conversation really begs the question, could your video business benefit from having community or competition? 
Because I think there is something to say for both, but if you had to pick one, which one would it be for you? Leave a comment below. I would love to hear from you. Uh, if you're looking for community, I want to invite you to the Grow Your Video Business Facebook group. There are all kinds of people in there. We're getting new people every day. And the conversations that we're having, uh, the uh, the networking that's happening, and it's all, I mean, if you don't like networking, you're like not super extroverted like this guy right here, um, the internet is a great place to kind of take that first step and then to kind of see like, you know, are these my people or are these not my people? So I invite you to check out the Grow Your Video Business Facebook group where you can find out like, is this tribe that Ryan is kind of building, is are, are they cool or not cool? What, can they help me in my pursuit of, of building a business that uh, that is sustainable, that I can charge what I'm worth, uh, that maybe one day I could sell or I could pass on to my kids? Uh, because that's my hope. And, and my hope is that you don't kill yourself doing this work, that you would find rhythms, that you'd create automations, that you would find simplicity and would be able to do the passion projects and the things that get you excited alongside of client work because you're probably always going to have to have some kind of client work to support the passion projects. And when, when you're able to do the passion projects as your thing, that is amazing. That is incredible. That is a huge gift and a huge blessing. My goal, my hope is to help you get there. And here's the other thing. I'm in this business. Like I have a business. This Studio Sherpa is my passion project. So instead of doing like passion project films, my extra time, like, you know, I'm carving out time during my work week, uh, to focus on this business because I am so passionate about helping you grow your video business. Uh, also, don't forget to check out our sponsors. If you need clarity on your finances, accounting, or your taxes, check out Core Group um, and and or if you need stock footage to help save the day on some of your projects, uh, make sure you check out Storyblocks and you can get direct links to those websites and it helps us if you use those direct links so that they can see like, oh, we're getting traction from you know the ads and stuff that are in the Grow Your Video Business podcast. Go to studiosherpas.com slash sponsors and uh, you can find out more about both of those companies there. And Core Group has been amazing for us. Storyblocks, we use music uh, from them. We use clips from them. They've got a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, but thank you for supporting them because that helps support the show. That is it, my friend. I hope to see you inside of the Grow Your Video Business Facebook group. Introduce yourself, say hello, and uh, tell me, you know, what's your favorite thing about me? Just kidding. We, we tell our kids that sometimes. We'll catch them off guard and be like, what's your favorite, or who do you like better, mom or dad? What, what's your favorite thing about me? Uh, yeah, it's fine. Don't, <laughs> don't take parent advice from me. Um, that's it. I am for you. I'm for the success of your video business. Reach out if you need anything. Ryan at studiosherpas.com. Find me on the socials. Um, I heart you and uh, hope to see you real soon. All right, fellow Sherpa, till then, climb on and peace out.